I just finished uh, the sixth book in uh, the Galactic Football League series uh, by Scott Sigler, uh, 2020 book, and I realized it's book six. There's no way I can really particularly talk about this without just massively spoiling the entire series. And to be honest, I would have to fill you in in so much to get you up to book six. Why not just do a video that just sort of talks about the Galactic Football League series? So yes, written uh, and also um, podcasted by Scott Sigler. Uh, it is a science fiction f sports series uh, set about 700 years in, this, in the future. Um, there's been a lot of warfare, a lot of kind of uh, interspecies. There's tons of different alien races uh, cooperation. Uh, one of those races, kind of a very minor one, being is being humans, uh, ruled by the Kratorakian Empire, which is like a massive, like the just by sh sheer force of numbers and just brutal force, they have been able to take basically kind of conquer m the majority of the races. There's some ones on the on the sidelines who basically they're species that can survive in such kind of um, radioactive and toxic things that they're outside. But, but for all purposes, the Kretorakians are in control. And um, one of their um, tools for control is uh, the um, is the Galactic Football League, where through sports, through kind of ritualized violence, I think as uh, Scott Ziegler has talked about, uh, you can unify unify all these kind of very many diverse um, beings into, into into one thing. We're all going to root for football games and stuff like that. Um, and so this the this this the um, the the uh, kind of all the species that are in here. This is the humans, the Scalorno. Uh, which are very kind of fast, kind of very thin little creatures, very hyper. Uh, the key who are just massive, kind of like Cthulhu, like kind of tentacle beasts, uh, who are who are the defensive and offensive lines. You've got the Quith and uh, heavy G humans, who are basically super augmented humans, uh, are the uh, the linebackers. Now, first thing I should say going into this is I know virtually nothing about football. I know there's a quarterback. He throws stuff. There's big guys in front of him who block, and there's fast guys who run out and catch the ball. Like that's the level of of, of what I know about sports. Um, one of the real uh, keys to this is that S Sigler is really good at taking you know what is football today uh, and uh, simplifying it and make it, turning it into a really great kind of a storytelling device and like you know these little bursts it's action scenes on the field and he's really good at describing that in a way i think a lot of people watch sports movies who've got no intention of watching um watching sports like i i've watched rocky but i'm not never going to be interested in uh football uh i you know watch i don't know field of dreams or all that for baseball so I don't think I've actually watched particularly any football movies, but you know, if they made this these this series into a movie, I would definitely watch it. Um, so yes, this book and this book starts uh, in 2009 with the starter uh, following human being Quentin Barnes. Uh, Quentin Barnes uh, is playing at kind of the third tier. There's there's three tiers of football, and the very lowest tier, just kind of your your most backwater kind of just you know barely above. Uh, barely above just you know you're playing in a lot is uh is the third tier and this is where he is he is playing he's playing uh he is a member of uh the purest purest nat nation on a mining colony that's called a makovi where he has grown up uh as an orphan um it is it's, it's ruled by a uh, religious um li religious uh theocracy uh it's very much kind of strict strict kind of morality stuff, really repressive regime. Um, his parents somehow had to flee. Uh, the big, the big distinguishing factor of the purest, the purest nation, uh, in this, you know, big empire, uh, where they want everyone to get a Kretorakian's political thing is everyone gets along is that the purists are super xenophobic. They are super racist. Um, they only believe in pure, the pure race, the pure human beings. Uh, they have a whole bunch of like Quentin talks about all these nursery rhymes, which are basically all the weak, the weak points that you could punch uh, these alien beings and incapacitate and kill them. Uh, it's that kind of, you know, that level of hatred and fear uh, in them. So uh, he, as he is, he is, the, he is the star football star quarterback for this purest nation football team. Uh, and, you know, yeah, he's the top of the heap there in, 
in the third third tier. But what happens is is that an alien, uh, Greedock the Splithead, who is a also he's the owner of the IGNF Krakens, who is I believe at this point in tier two, um, is scouts him, scouts him, uh, him and his uh, his coach. Um, they they scout Quentin Barnes and say, okay, we're going to get you because you're going to be super cheap. Nobody else wants you. Uh, there's definitely the feeling that there's no no purest nation quarterback is ever going to be able to actually compete in the upper tiers because he's had to cooperate with all these other other all, all these other beings, all those other races, and that that's there's no way that's going to happen. But Greedock and um, his um, Horkar the Hook Chest, uh, the the coach, decide that they want to take a chance on him, and he's and he is he is put forward, and he's really you know they they have a they have a starter who is Don Pine, who is this blue, blue, uh, um, skinned human, human being, uh, you know, augmented that way, uh, or, you know, just genetically different that way, who is this, is, is, is the starter. And, you know, he's there, they try and educate him. Um, and I mean, this is the really good, the good thing with this book is that, uh, it starts off with, uh, Quentin Barnes in the very start of the series is he is racist he is he he is um, super ignorant, super arrogant at the same time. Thinks think, thinking he's the god god gift to that. He's an angry guy. He did grow up an orphan. Uh, you 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 learn as the series goes along that basically he had to like you know. Luckily, he was somebody who grew up large. Like by the time he was twelve or thirteen, he was like over six foot and like super big. And he had to just he had to he had to fight his way. He had to punch his way because he was all alone. And there's a lot of anger there. A lot of rage, a lot of just basically, it's all about me. It's all about me. I have to protect only myself. He saw his brother executed uh, for stealing bread. Um, that kind of that that level of hard scrabble. Luckily, someone at a mining thing saw him throwing a rock and went, "Hey, you could throw a football." And that's how he ended up in the football thing. But it's very much that kind of idea of, you know, if if it hadn't, he would have probably died in the mines. Uh, is the thing. So he gets pulled out of that. And this is a fish out of water story. This is a story of, you know, will he learn to kind of overcome all his ignorance, all his racism to be able to become a leader, to be, to be able to, um, to unify this team or at least become a function functional, um, football player. He's got the physical skills, but there's so much mental skills, so much, um, uh, study that he has to do uh, not only just kind of just it, it's at this level you can't buy get by on I can throw a ball really well you have to know all the plays you have to be able to actually know your players you have to be able to motivate your players to actually care about you to protect you to catch your balls all that sort of stuff so um, that's the kind of that, that the start of the series and then there's the wider thing that Sigler sets up of this Kretorakian empire and how they are using this for control and uh, just and also various outside threats, inside threats, terrorist organizations. Um, you know the whole idea of him being an orphan. It's like, well, maybe some family members are actually still still alive. There is continual conflict between him and Greedock the Splithead, who um, is is shown as like you know he's he's a bad dude in himself. And uh, it's, it's in later books, actually, in the kind of the, the gangster, the the fine, the, this book, not the final book, but the latest book that you realize exactly how dangerous and bad a dude this is. So yeah, we go with the start, the starter, where they move into tier tier one, and and Quentin does become does move up to being the starter of the INF Krakens. Uh, there's the all pro where you get kind of the team stuff, but you also get someone's trying to assassinate him. It seems uh, you get the MVP. Where they get captured by this uh, other race, the Prowet race, is super dangerous, dangerous race that's you know been known for like nuking planets and stuff like that, uh, to 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 basically take it over because all that radiation doesn't bother them, so they can take over the planet. But they've killed millions and millions of people. Um, get to the champion where. Um, where you know that's there's there's continually you get you get the sports stories through throughout the thing. Um, Sigler's got the really good 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 thing of he'll he'll have sports scores, but he'll also have like suddenly we'll cut to the uh, the greatest damn sport show on TV, and it'll be it'll they'll be talking about kind of the overall kind of the 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 league that way and and stuff like that. It's good like 
fun ways to kind of have info dumps and get you more up to speed in the story. Um, but also he has like his sister that he's discovered gets driven into the poor Tath cloud, which is sort of like this Bermuda triangle triangle, uh, in, in, in this, in, in, in this, uh, galaxy. And, uh, they can't, you know, it's like, he's got to go in and rescue her, which also kind of brings up more of, of kind of the wider story, the wider outs, the outside of the stuff. Um, you know, and you know, a lot of this is, is he becomes more and more prominent. Uh, this is a, this is a universe where, uh, the, the, uh, Sklorno worship football players and set up churches. And there is a church of Quentin Barnes, which Quentin, while he has no use for his own church, actually maybe perhaps because he has no use for the purest nation is as he gets more and more educated, he is deeply uncomfortable that he's been set up as this kind of deity by, um, by other races. And, uh, the Kretorakian empire is always there looking to see like, how big is your church? Because if it gets past a certain point, they take action to make sure it doesn't get any bigger uh, action that would not w w work well for um, Quentin. And so then, yeah, we get to the gangster where uh, the relationship between Quentin Barnes and Greedock, the split head really comes to the fore. And it's interesting. We've gone, you go from the starter, the all pro, the MVP, the champion to the gangster, which one of those doesn't belong. It's like, Suddenly, uh, it, this is a, all the other stories, they would have stuff happening off season, but then they would have the season and we'd have the game. Uh, this one is very much, uh, the off this is completely the off season. The last book, uh, we had the final, the final game. And then this is him dealing with, uh, you know, start, starting with like all his, the injuries that he's sustained. Uh, Sigler is really good and thorough, almost in a George, George R. R. Martin manner of, uh, saying like, if you take injuries, they have consequences and uh, they, they, they don't get just magically waved away. Uh, one of the cool things he does with uh, this is, oh, this is a sports setting. And one of the rules is, is we can't use all of our super advanced technology uh, to uh, augment players. Uh, if you have augments, you immediately are flushed out and end up going to horrible, horrible prison. Uh, you can't use um, advanced technology to heal yourself. You can use like sort of what you get the sense is like rejuve tanks. It's like basically ways of helping your body do the healing, but uh, you can't, you can't do stuff that's going to uh, wave away stuff like horrible concussions, which Quentin, Quentin has been getting, sustaining all those concussions and they've been leading up and leading up or, you know, injury to various body parts. So, at, you know, after the game, after you're out of this, out of the uh, league, you can use that stuff. But within this thing, there is no magic way, hand wavy uh, science fiction. We're going to cure all your things. So there's real stakes there for every time Quentin gets injured. It's like, oh, will this be the career ending injury? And I mean, you know, not to, you know, as, as the thing goes on, that becomes a higher and higher probability. So that's the thing he has to deal with. Um, and yes, and the, the big, the big thing in, in this is him, him and Greedock, uh, having comes to a real head at the same time as there are even larger events going on that are pushing and pushing at Quentin, who has been so like, a, you know, I think, you know, as like a lot of professional athletes or anybody who's like at the apex of a field that he's been laser focused at the, at, at this part of his profession at his profession. And he's like, I don't care about anything else. I'm not a politician. I'm not a soldier. I'm not freaking God. I'm not, a, I'm not a God. I'm not a deity to be worshiped. I'm just a football player. And that gets more and more challenged as we go along. And indeed this book um, brings more developments in there that really, really point to the fact that Quentin is going to have to expand. It's going to have to further develop because that's one of the fun things about these books is, um, he has a lot of limitations. He has a lot of anger issues. Uh, he has a lot of just kind of like, I'm just a, I'm just a player. Just give me the ball coach. But he's, uh, also it's been pushing at him to be, to, to, he's a leader, leader of men, leader of, well, no, not just men. <laughs> That's very sexist of me. There's female Sklorno. There's there, you know, he's, he has, he has, uh, a fellow player, uh, Becca, Becca, the Recca who comes up in this book. So he has a relation, he has a serious relationship with, um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's also cool that way is that it's not a, uh, it's, you know, football. It's like, Oh, it's men, men, men. And it's, there's very kind of a testosterone -y thing. There's the Tweety brothers who are like, Oh, super mega, mega, super. They're, they're awesome, gigantic, comedic, quite deadly, uh, quite deadly linebackers. But, um, there's also, um, 
there's acknowledgement of more than that. So yeah, yeah, it is a super fun series. Uh, Sigler has done all these as audiobooks. He's really, really good at uh, coming up with all the all the voices for the cre- for the for the various creatures for the various characters. Uh, you can see there's a lot of love of sports in here. That even if I don't know the references, there's a Chick McGee who's this uh, news reporter who is always saying inappropriate inappropriate stuff, which is rings 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 true to uh to my experiences in in you know just canadian hockey or something like that there's some things that transfer over i don't also don't know much about hockey either other than i'm canadian so i probably absorbed a hell of a lot more of that but yeah so yeah that is the gfl series by scott sigler uh especially kind of on like as an audiobook i would totally recommend you know trying trying this out trying out like the starter uh it's very you know, fun. It does get darker. I, I was wondering that the last one, the gangster is starting to get, um, veer more into his, uh, kind of darker kind of, uh, techno thriller, um, other, other works, which I'm not as much a fan of. I'm definitely much more into, uh, this series where I, I've got a real emotional investment with Quentin from book to book, which I guess is what I was, I, I'm, I'm going for, but yeah. Yeah. So I will leave it there. I will leave it there more videos later.